Welcome back. Today I'm fitting this massive Boss Audio soundbar to my 2022 CF Moto U-Force 1000. So this one is about the biggest one they make in the range, I think. 46 inches total width, has an eight inch woofer, kind of subwoofer in the middle and four six and a half inch high output speakers. It's got a built-in D-Class amplifier along with all your normal stuff. So Bluetooth input, auxiliary line input, it's um, IPX5 water rated, even though it goes up in the roof, but I guess if it rains. Built in LED lights, so these dome lights and all that sort of stuff. So I'll have a cabin light in there now, it'd be awesome. And it's also got other outputs, so like a preamp, so you can connect these together with other Boss Audio bars. I think their diagram's got two of them in the roof and then tower speakers and all sorts of other stuff because it does marine and all that stuff as well. So maybe if you've got a wakeboarding boat and you want to just cut sick and install heaps of them. This one apparently fits cages that are 46 inch to 49 and a half inch wide, which I think's about a bit over 1.2 meters. And these mounts they give you do 1.5 inch to two inch roll cage bars. I was looking at the Eco X gear ones, but they're like a big round one that has to mount down somewhere. I thought about putting it in the back behind the headrest there, but I don't think it'll fit and it'll kind of get in the way of my rear view. So I might still get one of those for the canopy build, but this one here tucked up out of the way, plus the roof lights, I reckon it's the way to go. This one cost me $806, which is $77 shipping. It is quite big, I think it's about 15 kilos all up in the box. It was packaged up pretty well, so I made it here safely. That's Australian dollars from a mob called Elite Electronics. With the two sets of six and a half speakers and the sub, it's quoted to be a thousand watts. I'd say that's peak. Still pretty good though. I'm keen to see this thing fired up. This one is the BRRF 46A. It sounds like someone throwing up sort of thing. Hopefully that was enough of all the intro details because I'm really keen to get this fitted. So let's rip the roof off and start lining it up at the rails. I'm gonna test out this new Milwaukee impact ratchet that'll be. Looks pretty good to me. Put all them in the cup holder. Right up, that's the front, do the back. Sit back here in the tray. I'm sort of winging this, but you put the brackets on as pictured in the installation manual. Starts with this little rotating pivot mount. Just do them up finger tight. Then there's three smaller set screws for each side that bolt into the back of this roll bar mount block thing. Now I need to try and figure out how wide the actual roll cage is. 1405. You measure your spacing between your rails across the roof there. Mine's 1405 millimeters. Loosen that screw and this screw and then adjust it to be roughly that, that width. Now, hopefully I can wrestle this thing up in here. One hour later. So after wrestling with this thing for almost an hour, trying to figure out how to get those clamps to fit, I realized that these are actually 68 mil, so whatever that is in Imperial, when it only does up to a two inch clamp. The back rail is a two inch. These side ones are this weird thing with this Sort of an extrusion with this lip in here for doing the full cab kit with full doors and windscreen and all that sort of stuff. So the clamps don't fit. But after a quick trip to Bunnings and buying a length of M8 uh, booker rod, thread, thread all, whatever you call it, and bending that around a bit of pipe, cutting it and putting the M8 nuts that already came with the mounts on that. Pretty much just using the mounts direct off the soundbar. So just drilled another little, there's a slotted hole there. I just drilled another hole over there. And then, ta-da. Washers, spring washers, nuts, 
rattle down tight. It is rock solid. That ain't going nowhere. These are these silly little grab handles that are inside the roof here, which are not really in a position that you're going to use anyway. I'm going to get some uh, strap on ones that come up on here, the Velcro ones you can get off um, eBay. So that's where you normally grab anyway, or you grab inside the door. There's a nice big grab handle down here on the door, so you sort of don't really need them. They're pretty much pointless, but they make a pretty sweet soundbar mount. Right, let's get this thing wired up to the battery, plugged into here, and see as she goes. The next day. Last night I was getting a little bit late and I probably had a couple too many beers, but um, didn't want to piss the neighbours off too much because this thing is phenomenal. All you do is pair it to your phone via Bluetooth, and then it's got a power button there. Got to figure out a way to have it turn on without being really loud. Jesus. This big camera that I'm recording on has a big road shotgun mic on top with a big fluffy thing. So it's still not going to do it justice, but it's going to be a lot better than a GoPro camera. So I've got to play some uh, copyright free sounds. A lot of the ones you see on like, like Brody Moss use on like Young Bloods and stuff like that. So I can use them without getting a strike on YouTube. I'll run through a few different samples, I guess, maybe some different sounds. And yeah, see if you can hear the difference with a good quality mic. I'll try and do some outside, some inside. That's only on like a third. Sound and song.
Man, that thing will send you deaf in no time. My ears tell me it's a full thousand watt peak, for sure. It, the microphone, I doubt it does it justice. Whatever you can hear on this, if it's not clipping, times that by two, I reckon. Especially once I put the roof back on. Once, when the, when the roof was off, it was like bleeding a little bit out the back. Put the roof on, sound just like fulfilled right out, so. Absolutely amazing, 800 bucks, money well spent. I do need to get the second battery in so I can run it, like if I'm pulled up at camp or something, run it for a decent amount of time without flattening the battery. So that's one of the next projects. If you've got any questions on this one, let me know in the comments, happy to answer them. If you like these sort of videos, stay tuned because there's heaps more mods coming to this thing further down the track. If you like this sort of content, you'll probably like the toy hauler build as well that this is made to go on the back of. If you want to watch those, I'll put a playlist here somewhere. Check it out. Until then, see you next one.